يا طالب العلم قم لا تنم فإن الزمان انقضى وانصرم فكن ما حييت ضنينا به فظنك بالوقت عين الكرم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم آمين الإمام ابن قدام رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة he mentions and he says in the hadith hadith number 109 in عمدة الأحكام عن عبد الله بن عمر وأبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنهم عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم قال إذا اشتد الحر فأبردوا عن الصلاة فإن شدة الحر من فيح جهنم In this hadith from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, he says إذا اشتد الحر فأبردوا عن الصلاة when it becomes extremely hot when the heat when there is a heat wave and when it becomes extremely hot فأبردوا عن الصلاة then Delay the prayer, delay the dhuhr prayer until it cools down. Delay the dhuhr prayer until it cools down. فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ الْحَرِّ مِنْ فَيْحِ جَهَنَّمِ For indeed, شِدَّةَ الْحَرْ, this, the heat wave or the severe heat comes from the فَيْحُ جَهَنَّمِ from the breathing of جَهَنَّمِ from the breathing or from the breath of جَهَنَّمِ نعم. This hadith contains a few masail or issues the first benefit that we take from this hadith is jawazu ta'khiri salati dhuhr ila waqti al buruda the permissibility of delaying salatul dhuhr um, until it becomes cooler until it becomes cold or cooler it cools off and as you know my brothers the asl and the basic the default ruling when it comes to praying, uh, when it comes to the salawat, is that every salah must be prayed in its appointed time. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitab al-mawquta. Every salah has to be prayed in its appointed time. And that, as the hadith, as we learned it from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked, ayyul amali afdal, or ayyul a'mali afdal, which, what is the best type of action? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-salatu ala waqtiha, to pray uh, according to its, to pray each prayer uh, according to its appointed time, yani when it, the prayer first enters. However, there are certain exceptions that can be made. So there are certain situations in which we are allowed to delay the salah, the prayer, not until the, the time of the prayer has departed, but to delay the prayer for a period of time uh, for a particular core reason for a particular suburb and this suburb here as the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned is Shiddatul Har when there is a heat wave and the particular Salah and the only Salah that we are allowed to delay is Salatul Dhuhr although Salatul Dhuhr is not specifically mentioned in this particular Hadith however it is mentioned in another Hadith from the Hadith of Abu Sa'id Al Khudri in Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said specifically stating dhuhr, abridu bi dhuhr, delay the dhuhr prayer, delay the dhuhr prayer until it cools down, until it cools down. So, um, from the benefits of this hadith, is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned the illa and the reason why we should delay the dhuhr prayer, and the reason is because of severe heat or because of a heat wave. And the Prophet ﷺ even mentioned that this heat wave or this severe heat, it comes from the breathing of Jahannam. This, uh, this indicates to so another hadith, uh, f- uh, the, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, uh, The fire, Jahannam, complained to its Lord. And it complained and it said, Akala ba'di ba'dan. Parts of me are consuming other parts. فَأَذِنَ لَهَا بِنَفَسَيْنِ Allah Azza wa Jal, He allowed Jahannam to, to, to breathe twice. 
to breathe twice. Nafasun fi shita wa nafasun fi saif. To breathe in this, in the, to exhale and inhale in this, in the summer months and in the winter months. And the Prophet ﷺ explained that the heat wave that we experience in the summer months is because of Fayyah of Jahannam. Is because of the breathing of Jahannam billah. And the sheer and the and the cold weather and the, the zamharir or the severe cold that we experience in the winter is also caused by the breathing of Jahannam. Uh, so this hadith tells us the reason why we delay the Dhuhr prayer until it cools down is because it is extremely hot. It's extremely hot and this heat will uh, affect the khushu' of the person who's praying. As we mentioned previous hadith, in previous lessons, the khushu' and you know, preserving the khushu' of the salah is something that is uh, obligatory and something that the sharia and the legislator tries to protect at all costs. So in this hadith here, the reason why uh, some of the scholars, they said that the illa and the reason why uh, it, that there is a rukhsa and a concession has been given to us to delay the dhuhr prayer is because it, uh, yani praying in this heat wave will cause the imam to, uh, or the person who's praying to pray quickly and not to settle down and have tuma'neena and tranquility in the salah because of the heat wave, because of the sheer heat the person is more inclined to complete the salah quicker so this doesn't happen. The Shari and the legislator has allowed us to delay the Dhuhr prayer until it cools down so that we may pray in more comfort. We may pray in more comfort. And this is min taysiri sharia. This is from the ease of this sharia, the samaha to hadhi sharia, the simplicity and the compassion and the rahmah of this sharia al Um with regards, there are certain, some other issues in this hadith. The first, the, 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 the issues such as, for example, um, is this hadith speaking to a person praying on his or her own? Or is this hadith speaking to people who are praying in jama'ah? Yani is the hadith talking about, is this rukhsa and concession given to the person who's praying with the jama'ah only? Or does this concession encompass the person praying in the jama'ah and also the woman who's praying in her house. Or for example, a man, for example, who's maybe ill and he's praying in his home. A person or man praying in his own. Does it encompass the two? Um, the stronger opinion, Allahu A'lam, is that the hadith is am. The hadith is am. It encompasses everyone. It encompasses the person praying on his own. And it, encomp it encompasses the person praying with the jama'ah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam here did not discriminate; he didn't make a distinction. He said, "For every do, yani speaking to the to everyone, he said, uh, yani delay the prayer until it cools down." So this khitab is talking to everyone. This khitab is talking to everyone. Um, um, as for uh, the, the, the 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 second issue is, uh, is this specifically for salatul dhuhr? Or is this, does this also encompass uh, the Jum'ah prayer? Meaning, if it, there is a heat wave, should you delay the Jum'ah prayer as well? Uh, the answer is no. The Jum'ah prayer has its own ahkam and has its own uh, rulings. Um, and the Jum'ah prayer is not the Dhuhr prayer. The only concession we were given is for the Dhuhr prayer. Not the Asr prayer, not any other prayer, but specifically the Dhuhr prayer. And the proof of this is um, uh, is the hadith of Salama ibn al-Akwa' radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said kunna nujammi'u ma'a rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha zalat al-shams he said that we used to pray the Jum'ah prayer as soon as the zawal as soon as the sun uh, moved from the zenith from the middle of the sky as soon as the sun moved from the middle of the sky towards obviously the sunset um, this was when we prayed the Jum'ah prayer. So that the hadith of Salama ibn al-Akwa here is very wadih and clear in that the hadith tells us that the Jum'ah prayer, the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no matter how hot it was, 
They will not delay it, but rather they will pray as soon as there was, as soon as the zawal, as soon as the sun moved from the middle of the sky, from the from the zenith. And uh, and in other versions of this hadith, they used to say, "Wa kunna naqilu ba'daha." Yana, we used to we used to uh, have a siesta nap after the Jum'a prayer. So usually, the custom of the Sahaba was to have a, a midday nap or a siesta, or a qaylula as it's called in Arabic. They used to have it before the Dhuhr prayer, before the Dhuhr prayer, an hour or two hours before the Dhuhr prayer. And then they would pray Dhuhr, and then they would go out and uh, to their markets and, and, um, and, and, um, and their business. Um, but for Jum'a, because Jum'a was prayed so early, and they had to prepare for the Jum'a prayer, so they feared that if they pray, if they slept before Jum'a, they would miss the Jum'a. Um, they would uh, delay their Ghada and their lunch and the Qaylula until after the Jum'a prayer, as, as the hadith uh, of Salama uh, ibn al Akwa radiallahu uh, ta'ala anhu tells us. Um, These are the most important issues uh, with regards to this hadith. One more issue, Afwan, is uh, what about what if there is no heat wave? What if, for example, in countries uh, you know where there's hardly any summer, you know, colder countries uh, such as here, مثلا, in the UK or other European countries, is it is it هل salah? Is it from the Sunnah? To delay the Dhuhr prayer Is it from the Sunnah to delay the Dhuhr prayer Or is this ruling specifically For um, for only c- For countries or places Where there is a heat wave The answer is There is two, there are two opinions But the correct Wallahu alam The stronger opinion Is that this spe- specific ruling Is for any country Where there is a heat wave At, at Dhuhr time Any country If there is no heat wave uh, Such as if it's the winter For example then it is not from the Sunnah to delay the Dhuhr prayer. It is not from the Sunnah to delay the Dhuhr prayer. Uh, the reason for this is because of the Qaida, al hukmu yaduru ma'a illatihi wujudan wa adaman. This is a very famous and, and a Qaida and a principle that is widely known and used by the Fuqaha, which basically means that the hukum, the ruling, uh, it revolves around the cause of the ruling. If the cause and the sabab is found, then the ruling is all is fa- is is operative. If the sabab and the illa is non-existent, then the ruling is also non-existent. The illa, there are two types of illal. There are two types of causes and reasons. Illa mansusa, illa a illa or a cause that is explicitly mentioned in the hadith, uh, and a illa. That is mustambata illa that ka- is not explicitly mentioned but implied in the hadith. Implied in the hadith. Here the illa is explicitly mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explicitly mentioned the reason why we delay. We are allowed to delay the dhuhr prayer. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi didn't leave it ambiguous. He said he told us either shtad al harru when it becomes extremely hot faabridu uh, anis salah. So it's clear that the reason where why we are delaying the dhuhr prayer, why we are allowed to delay the dhuhr prayer is because of this specific, is because of the heat. So the heat, the, the illa and the cause for delaying the dhuhr prayer is the heat. So in places when, or in times when there is no heat, there's no heat wave, it's cool, there's, it's not, it's not, there is no mashaqqa, there's no hardship in praying dhuhr on, in its appointed time, then fi hadihi al-awqat la tushra'u in these specific situations, it is not uh, legislated to delay the dhuhr prayer, to delay the dhuhr prayer uh, until obviously it cools down because it's already cool, it's already cold. So that is Wallahu A'lam, Al Qawl Al Rajah, and the correct opinion. And this is a, the opinion of Jam'un Min Al Muhaqqiqeen, yani many of the scholars, Rahimahumullahu uh, Ta'ala. Um, Now, the next hadith, hadith number 110, and Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Kunna nusalli ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shiddatil har. 
فإذا لم يستطع أحدنا أن يمكن جبهته من الأرض بسط ثوبه فسجد عليه أنس بن مالك if you have a different you might have a different version or طبعه uh, so this hadith could be could be mentioned uh, you know in in يعني uh, in, a, in it might not be in this particular place that you have in your books um, you know if you can't find it it's probably two or, you have to keep going and inshallah you'll find it in two or other three hadith uh, inshallah ta'ala after two or three hadith however in some tabaat this is mentioned in in the in as you know hadith number 110 naam Anas ibn Malik kunna nusalli ma'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So Anas ibn Malik he says that we used to pray with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shiddatil har when it was really hot We used to pray dhuhr and he's talking about the dhuhr prayer We used to pray dhuhr when it was extremely hot فَإِذَا لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ أَحَدُنَا أَنْ يُمَكِّنَ جَبْهَتَهُ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ When one of us was unable to place his forehead on the, on the ground on the ground uh, because of the heat obviously بَسَطَ ثَوْبَهُ فَسَجَدَ عَلَيْهِ uh, he would, uh, he would uh, put a garment and make sujood on, a thaw, on his thawb يعني he would make sujood uh, on a piece of cloth to protect, to protect his forehead from being burnt because it was that hot so you may be thinking okay this hadith here now is telling us that the Sahaba used to pray with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Salat al-Dhuhr when it was extremely hot but the hadith that we just studied now just earlier that hadith uh, the hadith of Abu Hur- uh, Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira tells us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he, he gave us a concession to delay the Dhuhr prayer until it cools down this hadith, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, it's clear it hasn't cooled down. They're praying when it's extremely hot. So, كيف نجمع بين الحديثين? How do we reconcile between the two hadith? Does anyone, who can, does anyone know? No. It was hot the whole day. <laughs> yes, but it could have cooled down. It could have cooled down. It could be seasonal, winter or no, but the hadith says Shiddat al har We used to pray when it was extremely hot. Naam. Maybe it was Jum'ah. It's not Jum'ah, no, it's Dhuhr. Naam. The time was about to finish. Uh, close. Naam. The, we, we, we combine between the two hadith. This hadith, hadith Anas ibn Malik, uh, is when they, they prayed Dhuhr, when it, it did cool down, but the ground was still warm. The ground was still warm, but their bodies had cooled down. The weather has cooled down, but obviously the heat remained on the ground. So when they made sujood, uh, they, they feared that they would burn their foreheads, right? Because it was still warm. And then and, and they, would put a, they, would, they would protect themselves with a garment or, or with a cloth. So that's how we, uh, we can combine between the two ahadith. Um, uh, with regards to the ruling on placing anything or placing a garment uh, between uh, uh, placing a garment or a cloth or a piece of cloth uh, uh, between you and the, and the ground so you make sujood on a piece of cloth what is the hukum, what is the ruling on that firstly my brothers we learned remember previously from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Abbas the Prophet sallallahu he said umirtu an asjuda ala sab'ati a'zum I have been made, I have been commanded to prostrate on seven limbs, right? You all know those seven limbs, right? Ala sab'ati a'zum. Okay? Now, uh, that particular hadith of Abdullah uh, ibn Abbas tells us that you, are, you have to make, your sujood will only be correct if you place, you make sujood on seven uh, limbs. And from those sab'ati a'zum is al-jabha. The jabha was one of them. The jabha being the forehead. Uh, so, are you allowed to make sujood on something? Or on a ha'il, on a piece of paper, on a book, on anything? Well, are you allowed to, to, to make sujood on these things? The ulama, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they said that the things that you make sujood on are divided into two. Things that are mutasil or things that are munfasil. Things that are connected to you and things that are... Uh, things that are, that are a part of you 
and things that are um, that are not a part of you, things that are, uh, يعني, things that are basically independent of you. In, so if things that are a part of you, they say that because of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, you cannot make sujood on your on your limbs. So, مثلا, you can't use you can't make sujood on your hand. So, مثلا, when you're making sujood, you put your hand and make sujood on your hand. You can't. It's connected to you. Okay. Uh, so that's connected to you, as in your body. If you're wearing a piece of garment, you're wearing a shimag, مثلا, or a imam, مثلا, um, uh, or any type of cloth, or مثلا, you have مثلا, يعني عمامة, they say that the only time you can make sujood on a garment that is connected to you is if there is a udur shari, if there is a legitimate excuse, if you have a if you have a reason to, such as for example, you're making sujood on sharp objects. Method, you're, you're praying in a place and then you find many sharp objects there and you want to protect your forehead from being harmed. Or for example, like in this hadith here, hadith Anas, you're making sujood on a very hot earth or hot ground. So you, you want to protect yourself and you have nothing else. Um, in this instance, you are allowed to use your garment, the garment that you're actually wearing, anything that you're wearing, whether it's a ghutra, shima, whatever. Okay? Um, if there is no cause and there is no reason whatsoever, uh, then they say that it is makruh and disliked to make sujood on, any, on, 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 on something. If it's, if it's, it's considered makruh. Um, if, for example, the earth, method, or the, the place that you're praying, method, or making sujood, there's, a, there's, it's, there's water, it's wet, مثلا, um, or muddy, مثلا. in this instance, obviously, you can make sujood on, uh, on, 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 a, on something that's connected to you, if you don't have a sajada, if you don't have a prayer mat, for example. That's, that's with regards to things that are connected to you. Things that are disconnected to you, for example, a handkerchief, or, for example, making sujood on a piece of paper, making sujood on a cloth, a garment or whatever and then they say that if you are praying in a masjid and the masjid already has a carpet uh, then in that instance it is disliked for you to make sujood on anything else so it is considered makruh for you to bring your sajada to bring your um, prayer mat and pray on your prayer mat when everyone else is praying on the masjid in the masjid yeah, and using the masjid carpet the reason is they say for two reasons number one there is, there is uh, arrogance in this and there is sort of pride in this. It is as though you are saying, uh, يعني, I am better than uh, everyone else because I'm making sujood on this, on this prayer mat. يعني, what is sufficient for the Muslims should be sufficient for you. That's the first reason. The second reason is if uh, it, it, there is, uh, others may think that the place is najis. Other people praying may think that the only reason you're praying and you're placing your يعني, sajada there or a prayer mat there or a garment or a cloth or whatever or your jacket even um, is because there is the place there is najasa. So others may even decide not to pray there. And then this will cause khalal fi saf. This will cause the saf and the row not to be, uh, not to be uh, complete or the, or the row not to be uh, in, يعني, orderly and organized. So they say in that, in that instance, it is considered makruh. The salah is not batil, but it's considered makruh for that person to pray uh, with a prayer mat if there is a carpet underneath the prayer mat. If that person has an allergy, for example, a nose allergy, and the carpet causes them uh, discomfort, and the reason why they pray, place something like a prayer mat or a piece of paper is because of this reason, then for them it is not makruh. For that particular person, it is not considered mother makruh. It's not considered makruh. Naam. So we have to, inshallah ta'ala, be very, be, uh, we have to pay attention to, to these ahkam uh, and to these rulings. Um, obviously the Sahaba, they had a reason here, the, the, the sabab here was that they felt the harara, harara or the heat of the sun or the heat of the, of the ground, which means that usually when it's not hot, they wouldn't place anything uh, they, they, and between them and their place of sujood. They wouldn't place anything between them and their place of sujood. 
Um, there's one mas'ala that's remaining, which is, uh, are you allowed to make sujood on an object? An object. So we're not talking about a cloth, we're talking about a, a hard object. So this object could be a book. It, it, any object that uh, basically causes you not to be able to make sujood on the earth, on the ground. Um, so it could be a book. Um, it could be يعني, any, any object that's above the, uh, the ground, basically. This, the, the answer is no. You are not, we are not allowed to make sujood on objects. The reason being, firstly, it is, the, is, it is the, the practice of the people of innovation. It is the practice of the people of Ahlul Bid'a and the people of innovation. And obviously, as Ahlul Sunnah or Jama'ah, we make sure that we do not imitate the people of deviance and misguidance. The second reason is, then you are not specifically making sujood on the earth. The sujood, sujood has to be on the ground. Um, and you making an object, uh, making sujood on an object, this يعني, means that you haven't actually technically made sujood on the ground, but you've made sujood on an object. Next hadith, hadith of Anas ibn Malik, um, رضي الله تعالى عنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نسي صلاة uh, من نسي صلاة فليصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك uh, وتلا قوله تعالى وأقم الصلاة لذكر The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says whoever uh, forgets to pray a particular salah let him pray it when he remembers it there is no other expiation except there is no expiation for this salah except this and then the Prophet recited وأقم الصلاة لذكر Allah عز وجل says وأقم الصلاة establish the prayer لذكري يعني uh, لذكري for in all for my remembrance for my remembrance or the also the another meaning for the ayah is وأقم الصلاة and establish the prayer when you remember when you remember okay uh, there is another قراءة شاذة uh, يعني للذكرى وأقم الصلاة للذكرى يعني when you remember and in the version of Sahih Muslim the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says من نسي صلاة أو نام عنها فكفارتها أن يصليها إذا ذكرها Whoever forgets to pray a prayer or oversleeps uh, and sleeps all over a prayer then its expiation is for this person to pray that particular prayer إذا ذكرها if he actually remembers it نعم. So first مسألة here is uh, what is the hukum and the ruling of a person who uh, does not pray intentionally? Amdan. The hadith is not obviously talking about that. But a person who intentionally misses a prayer. This is a person who's not asleep, who hasn't forgotten, intentionally misses the prayer until the time of that prayer elapses. The, the, some of the ulama have made takfir of this person, have actually deemed this person to be a disbeliever. Um, uh, and, and others have said that this person has fallen into a major sin Kabira min kaba'il al-dhunub Kabira min kaba'il al-dhunub The second mas'ala is Is it allowed for that person to, to uh, Is there an expiation for this particular salah That this person has missed on purpose Is there an expiation? Is there a kafara? Many of the salaf Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim They took the position that there is no kafara for this person, this person has, uh, يعني, because of the the, the 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 nature and the extreme nature of the sin that they have committed, uh, and the and the criminality that they have that they have done, and the fact that they have uh, they have committed a, a major sin on purpose, they say that nothing can expiate this, and they say uh, they cite as an evidence, for example, a person qatlul khata'i if you if you manslaughter in Islam or if you if you murder some if you kill someone by mistake by mistake you're hunting methanan you're hunting some deer and you shoot you try to shoot the deer and then your bullet hits a person this was by mistake there is a kafar there's an expiation for it okay and يعني, there's 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 a blood money that you have to give deer but uh, if you intentionally murder someone the scholars, obviously, they say there is no deer, there is no kafara, there is no kafara for that particular sin. And similarly, they say, similarly, similar to that is the salah. If a person abandons the salah on purpose, one salah on purpose, there is no kafara. And they say that that person, alayhi an yatub, that doesn't mean that there is no tawbah for this person. 
It means that that person has to make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal وَيُكْفِرُ مِنَ النَّوَافِلِ And that person prays many nawafil, many sunan prayers. Many sunan prayers. To try to make up for that particular grave sin that they have done. However, he or she is not allowed to, 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 to repeat, to pray that salah again. To try to make up that salah. There's no such thing as making up that salah. It cannot be made up because he did it on purpose. He missed that salah on purpose. Okay? Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, that's the first opinion. The second opinion is there is a kafara. There is an expiation. Yes, this person has committed a major sin. Kabiru min kabairi dhunub. But there is an expiation. And the kafara is that this person, uh, after, after they make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal, they make up that salah that they have missed. They make up that salah that they have missed. Okay? Now, if they, uh, the, the, the dalil that they cite is this hadith here, the hadith of Anas al Malik, and they say that if the person who's, pray, who's asleep or forgets, if they are allowed to have an expiation, um, then why can't the person who, who abandons the prayer on purpose, why can't he or she also have an expiation? So they make the, their delil is the qiyas. Their delil is the qiyas to, uh, of, of uh, hadith Anas ibn Malik. Um, however, my brothers, you have to realize that the scholars, when it comes to missing a salah on purpose, some scholars have said that that person is a kafir, is a disbeliever. So if that person has, is a kafir and a disbeliever, Let's say someone misses Salat al-Dhuhr on purpose. They know it's Salat al-Dhuhr, 1.15, 2.15, 3.15. They know it's Salat al-Dhuhr, 4 p.m. It's Salat al-Dhuhr. What time does Salat al-Asr come in? Salat al-Asr, 5.37. It comes in 5.37. 5.37, they become kafir. Wal'iyadu <coughs> billah. Yani, they've allowed themselves to miss Salat al-Dhuhr on purpose. They know they have to pray Salat al-Dhuhr. They're not asleep, obviously. When, it, when the clock hits 5.37, they are no longer min al-Muslimin. This person is, is upon kufr, wal-iyadu billah. So they say that this person, because he's upon kufr, the only way that he can, يعني, he has to come back into Islam. So if he comes back into Islam, by saratul, he comes back into Islam by Salatul Asr, at 6 p.m. or 5.59 p.m., he remembers... Uh, the grave sin, he makes tawbah and he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, he comes back into Islam at 6 p.m. When he comes back into Islam at 6 p.m., they say, or the scholars, they say that the Prophet ﷺ told us that a tawbah to tajubu ma qablaha, that tawbah uh, wipes away everything that has preceded it. This person is a new Muslim now. This person now is a new Muslim. So if this person is a new Muslim, there's no point in them making up the salah that they missed on purpose when the previously previously there's no point so they 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 uh, they are now a new muslim and they have to start again from from min jadid and they have to continue uh, praying from there as for the scholars that this that say that he is not a kafir but this person has fallen into a major sin then they say this person has to make up that particular salah so the person, my brothers, who missed a salah on purpose is Baina Amrain. Their iman is between two opinions of the scholars. Who would take that risk? Yani who in their right mind would take that risk? Yani who would say, for example, Allah, yani, I'm going to go with the second opinion and inshallah I'll make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. How do you know that this, the, 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 the adilla and the evidences of the scholars of the first opinion, then their evidences are not stronger in the Allah Ta'ala. How do you know? And their evidences are strong. So that person, their whole Iman and faith is between those two opinions. SubhanAllah. Are they Muslim or are they Kafir? Based on what? Based on missing one Salah on purpose. And this is something that we have to propagate. We have to, we have to uh, spread. This knowledge we have to spread. There are how many, how many people are out there, so-called Muslims, that don't even pray. Forget missing one prayer. These people don't even pray Jum'ah prayer. They don't even go to Jum'ah. Yani weeks or months go by before they even pray. Weeks, sometimes years, subhanAllah. It's years, my, my brothers. And yani these people, subhanAllah, that, you know, you know, you know, that consider themselves to be Muslim. Yani we have to warn them. 
We have to warn them and we have to, my brothers, if, if, every, if all the Muslims that prayed treated all the Muslims that do not pray the way they ought, they ought to be treated, then we would have less Muslims abandoning the Salah. Do you understand, my brothers? Yani this is wala wal bara. This is loving for the sake of Allah, hating for the sake of Allah. The only reason why you, yani, how do we treat them? How do we treat them? Firstly, we don't give them salam. Those people who who we, yani, who don't pray, we don't say salam alaykum to them. We don't. We don't treat them the same way that we treat the Muslims. Those people who have abandoned the prayer, we don't pray. If they die tomorrow, we don't pray salatul janaza on them. We don't even pick up their body from the morgue. You may think, subhanAllah, this is extreme. Wallahi, it's not extreme. This was the, this was the, the madhab of the majority of the scholars, my brothers. This was the madhab of, of the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn al-Shaqiq. He said that I did not meet a single companion. And he met over 30. I did not meet a single companion except that they were under the opinion that whoever abandons the prayer is a kafir, is a disbeliever. So these people that do not pray, imagine my brothers, a family, someone who did not pray, who was known for being Tariq al-Salah, and the Imam of the Masjid refuses to pray Salatul Janazah on this person, and the Muslims in the Masjid refuse to pray Salatul Janazah on that person. What do you think would be the, 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 the raddatul fi'l and the reaction of the others who do not pray? How would they feel? They will, they will see the effect of not praying with their very eyes. No one is going to pray on my dead body, subhanAllah. My body is not even going to be picked up from the morgue, subhanAllah. There's, there's no sentiment in Islam. The Prophet wasallam he told us that the difference between Muslims and non-Muslims is the salah. If you don't pray your salah, you are not a Muslim. Just like if you don't go to engineering school or medical school, you're not an engineer, are you? Why, يعني, would someone, if you went to someone and said, Akhi, barakallahu feek, I want you to call me an engineer out of sentiment, you know? But have you been to engineering school? No. Do you know the first thing about engineering? No. So why should I call you an engineer? The same, similarly, these people that do not pray, we ask them, why do you not pray? Wallah, I'm too lazy. What's stopping you from praying? Inshallah, one day I'll pray. Come and pray, my brother. No, not today. I'm not pure. I'm not tahir. And we give them da'a we give, and they don't pray. They don't, and after, they know the ruling. They know the ruling. So this person now, should we call them a Muslim? La, we don't call them a Muslim. Even if their name is Ahmed or Muhammad or Abdullah or Hassan, it doesn't matter what their name is. They might as well be called Michael and Sarah and John. It doesn't really make a difference. If John prayed tomorrow, we pray upon him, even though his name is John. Do you understand? So this is important, my brother. This is important. If we, as Muslims, even if they're your family members, if a person does not pray, don't say salam alaikum to them. Don't give them that honor. As-salamu alaykum is honorable. This is only for lil musalleen. This is only for mother. For those who pray, if they don't pray, don't say salam alaikum to them. Greet them whatever you, hi, hello, how can I help you? That's it. They say salam alaikum to you, don't respond to them with wa alaikum salam. Why? Because they're not praying, they don't pray. La yusallun. This is, not, this is not being extreme. This is what our religion calls to my brothers. This is your love for Allah Azza wa How can you love someone who doesn't even give time to make sujood to the Creator? How? This person doesn't even make sujood to Allah Azza wa Jal, Rabbul Alameen. How can you like that person? How can that person have any, uh, any um, uh, respect in your heart? How can you have respect for that person? It doesn't matter if, they're, if they've gone to university, they have, they're, if they're kind to their parents. It doesn't matter if they, if they give you gifts. It doesn't matter if... It doesn't matter. Any, nothing matters. If they don't pray, nothing matters, my brothers. This person is not considered to be Rajul Khair. This is not a good person. Doesn't matter if everyone else thinks them they're a good person. I've heard some people, subhanAllah, say, Wallahi, so and so, he's a, he's a good person, he has good akhlaq, good etiquette, but la yusalli, he doesn't pray. La yusalli, he doesn't pray. If he doesn't pray, how can he be a good person? Mustahil. A good person is someone who prays to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
This is a person who enjoys all of the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal, but doesn't think about it for one second. This person doesn't give time to Allah. It's as though this person is saying, I have no time for Allah. I have no time for my Creator. Anyone who doesn't have time for Allah Azza wa Jal, for his Creator, how can you even trust them? That person is not considered trustworthy. You know, so this is something we need to pay very, very close attention to, my brothers. Um, Naam. So, the, so if a person forgets a salah, then this person is ma'dhur, is excused. If a person oversleeps, this person is excused. And the kafara and the expiation is that they pray when they remember. And the next mas'ala is with regards to this hadith is, should they pray as soon as they remember or are they allowed to delay? The answer is, they are allowed to delay if the delay is for a legislative reason. Mathalan, if they have to go and make wudu, if they have to make ghusl from the janaba, or as the Prophet ﷺ once he missed, uh, he, they, him, يعني, the Sahaba and the Prophet, they woke up late, Mathalan, for Fajr, and they were traveling and they woke up late for Fajr, and the Prophet ﷺ, يعني, the, he woke up when the heat of, when he felt the heat of the sun on his cheek, cheeks. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, يعني, uh, let, us, uh, let us leave this place. This is a place which, in which the shaitan came to. This is a place in which the shaitan, there is a shayateen, there are shayateen here. So because of this, the Prophet وسلم, sahab, they moved from that place. And then when they went to another place, they prayed. So obviously they delayed. But that delay was for a sabab and a reason. So if the delay is for a reason, then you are allowed to delay. But if the, it's not for a reason... For example, you know, you're going to pray when it, you know, it, you've, مثلاً, the salah has gone, the time of the salah has gone, so you're going to pray when it's most convenient for you in a, in a few hours' time. لا, then you're not allowed to pray in that, uh, for, uh, you're not allowed to delay for, for that particular reason. Um, the next hadith, hadith Jabir. One more hadith, inshallah, and then we'll stop. Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhumah anna Mu'ad ibn Jabal Mu'ad ibn Jabal kani yusalli ma'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-ishaa al-akhira thumma yarji'u ila qawmihi fa yusalli bihim tilka salah So Jabir he radiallahu ta'ala anhumah uh, he says that Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu he used to pray, pray with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-ishaa al-akhira so he used to pray behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the ishaa prayer and then he would go back to his people. And then he would lead them in Isha. Uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabal is from a tribe called Banu Salima. And Banu Salima, they lived in, on outside of Medina at that time. So they lived outside the walls of Medina. And they lived in, uh, يعني in, uh, in the, it's called Diyaru Bani Salima. So Mas, uh, in Medina, مثلاً, for those of you who have been to Medina, there is a masjid called Masjid, masjid Al-Qiblatayn. Masjid Al-Qiblatayn or Masjid Bani Salima. It is close. Uh, it is only like a mile or, or, or half a mile uh, away from the Islamic University of Medina. And this, mas- this locality in Medina uh, was was in al in, uh, in, uh, in 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 the valley of al aqir this was no this was the valley this was the locality of the, of the region which was owned by or, or by the tribe of banu salima and muad was someone who uh, strove his utmost to be with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at all times but at the same time he had a duty to his people because he was the most learned and the most knowledgeable of them he also led them in prayer as well. But because they were so far away from the Prophet وسلم, his people weren't able to pray the Isha prayer with the Messenger of Allah وسلم. So they used to pray uh, in, their, in, their, in their masjid. Um, and Mu'ad used to pray with the Prophet وسلم, and they used to wait for him until he came back. Until he came back and he led them in, in prayer. So there are, the, the, there are some masail in this hadith. The first mas'ala is what is the ruling on a mutanaffil? On a, what is the ruling on an imam who's praying a sunnah prayer to lead 
a people who are praying a fard prayer to lead a people who are praying mother a fard prayer um, th- there are two opinions or two positions that the fuqaha have taken with regards to this particular mas'ala the correct opinion is the is the opinion that says alhamdulillah that it is allowed and permissible for a person who's praying a sunnah prayer to pray behind or oh sorry to to lead in prayer a people who are praying uh, a fard prayer as muad radiallahu ta'ala anhu in this and it's very wadih and clear in this hadith muad prayed his fard prayer with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came back and then he led his people so he's praying isha a second time but the second time he's praying isha is a sunnah for him but for them it's the first time they're praying isha so for them it's a fard for them mother it's a fard it's a fard um so in that in that regard uh, they, they, the scholars they say or some of the scholars they say that it is allowed for a person who is a praying a sunnah prayer to lead in salah people who are praying behind him a fard prayer so for them it's a fard prayer for him it's a sunnah prayer um and uh, what uh, and uh, with regards to the opposite of this, which is if a person is praying a fard prayer, but he's leading a people that are praying sunnah prayer, the opposite of this, for them it's sunnah. Then in this, this is also allowed. In fact, some of the scholars have said that there is ijma in this particular issue. So it's, it's the opposite scenario. And um, there's there, there are other hadith basically that uh, that support this, such as the the hadith of Salatul Khawf, the hadith of the fear prayer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you know, the fear of Salatul Khawf is rak'atayn, it's two, it's two units of prayer, and it has a specific hay'a and a way of praying. The Prophet would lead the Sahaba, some, the, some of the Sahaba, and the Prophet would pray Dhuhr, but he would, he, would pray, he would pray two rak'at, lead some of the Sahaba, and then they would leave, and then uh, he would then lead them again, uh, lead the second uh, the second group again so he would also lead the second group uh, again um, naam. the next uh, mas'ala is uh, what is the ruling on repeating a fard prayer are you allowed to repeat a fard prayer if you're allowed to repeat a fard prayer uh, if there is a reason and a cause a legislative reason that reason is as a يعني, مثلا, if you're if you find if you see someone who's missed the fard prayer and he's praying on his own then you can pray with him uh, out of compassion and sadaqah and charity because the prophet sallallahu he saw once a man praying on his own and he said to the sahaba man yatasaddaqu ala hadha who's going to give this one in char- who's going to give sadaqah and charity to this one and they and some of the sahaba one of them stood up and prayed with him prayed with him so in this particular regard you are allowed to pray to pray that fard prayer again but the asal is that the fard prayer is only wajib once and the asal is it is not from the sunnah to repeat the same fard prayer more than once because then it will become a bid'ah then it will become mother an innovation um and inshallah ta'ala naqif in the hadal had we'll stop here and continue next week wa jazakumullah khairan wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in naam In the first scenario or the second one? Um, when you're praying behind the person that's, that's missed a lot of Naam. Uh, so, so there's two scenarios. Right. Imam is mutanaffil. The Imam is praying sunnah. Yeah. People praying behind him are praying fard. Right, the, second. the second one, Imam is praying the fard prayer. Yeah. The people praying behind him are praying sunnah prayer. Right. So, No. Can the person pray at Asr time? Because it's uh, forbidden time. Um, which were, uh, sorry, again? So if the person missed the Asr prayer no. and you pray behind him as a charity, then can can I pray behind the person that missed the Asr prayer? Uh, naam, naam. So th- this is salah to that the to sabab. Naam, yes. So you have to go back to the the the, the, the mas'ala that we took l- yeah, last week. In the madhab al-shafi'iya, yes, you are allowed. In the in the I think the Malikiya or the Ahnaf, you are not allowed. But well, you are because there's a sabab. There's a reason for it now. No.
you don't uh, miss the um, prayer when you're sleeping. Missing? The prayer was, was no. So for example, Fajr prayer um, is often missed because of sleep. No. But um, what if you were to sleep late on purpose? Do you know what I mean? No. You don't. You don't manage your time properly, so you sleep late. Uh, it depends and if it happens frequently and if it goes back to the knee and the intention of that person if that person is there, their intention is to miss the Fajr prayer then obviously they're sinful um, but they intend, if, they, if their intention isn't to miss the Fajr prayer but for example they try to sleep early but they just cannot they, they, you know, they have insomnia or, or they have difficulty sleeping and because of this they miss the Fajr prayer but they don't want to miss the Fajr prayer they take precautions they put their alarm on yeah. and do everything that they need to do or ask someone to wake them up but they still can't wake they still don't wake up then this person is excused inshallah right is the person sinful or is the person disbelieving sorry is the person sinful or is the person disbelieving who which person the person that is misses this uh, pleasure prayer by purpose by sleeping the, yeah, and if, they, if, if they if they've made the intention yeah. to miss the fajr prayer yes the intention they want to miss the Fajr prayer, then yes, it, they fall into that khilaf. So, right. no. And you know, the other opinion of uh, missing the prayer by purpose and it's a major sin. That major sin is above Sheikh Asghar, right? Which major sin? Um, the major sin. So the missing, the, missing the prayer on purpose? Yeah. That's kufr. Right. According to one opinion of the scholars. Right. No. opinion is a major sin. Is that above Sheikh Asghar? Uh, that that would be a major sin. It would be uh, equal to, if not less than, shirk asghar. Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, Ustad, in regards to um, missing the prayer of Fajr time, what would be the case of someone who sets their alarm, they woke up, the time of Fajr is there, but they're tired, they're in that kind of haze of sleep, maybe they click snooze on their alarm, so they've woken up at Fajr time, the time of Fajr has started, they click snooze, maybe in that same kind of phase, they just constant without really thinking or whatever the reason may be, without fully waking up, they're clicking snooze. And then by the time they've fully woken up, the time for Fajr has passed. What is the state of this person? So look, Shaykh Sayyidina he says, Man thabata islamu biyaqeen, la yazulu anhu illa biyaqeen. Whoever's Islam is affirmed with certainty, the Islam will not, will not leave without certainty do you understand so there cannot be no shak or no doubt in the mas'al and the issue so that particular scenario that you've described we can't take any ruling from that scenario because it's one of it's something that you can't quantify it it's not like someone who is sitting down watching the clock and knows sal the salah is leaving that's that's a particular that's a different scenario so that particular scenario it would be it would mean nothing if i said he's not a kafir or he's, a, or he's a Muslim, it would mean absolutely nothing. Because it's one of those scenarios where you cannot quantify. And it goes back to the knee and the intention of that person. Again, Islam, you know, holds, Islam expects people to hold themselves accountable. No one is going to do, uh, do muraqaba on you. No one sees it. No one's watching you except Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal is, is he's watching you. But Islam doesn't ask others to watch each other. Allah doesn't tell us this group should always uh, yani spy on this group. In fact, Allah says, Wala tajassasu. Do not spy on one another. Right? So, um, everyone has to hold themselves to account. If this, is, if this person yani, does this for, ev- for all, all the time, yukhsha lahu, yani, yukhsha alayhi. we fear for this person. But as for yani, saying with conviction he's fallen out, yani, he's not a Muslim, then Allahu A'lam. We can't, we, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. But again, this person is fair for this person. Uh, and, and this person has to take precautions. No. No. Asr. No. Right? Oh, say Salatul Asr and Isha. No. Four rakats, yeah? But this one you read the Quran now. This one you don't. No. Who follows who? So who's praying Maghrib? 
if I say our pay asif uh-huh. and read in the recitation of the Quran, if it's below, no. and the guy behind me is praying Salatul, Isha, he wants to pray Isha, and we will combine two, like we will pray as Jama'ah, but he wants to pray Isha, I will pray Asr. And it's both, this one is all. So it can't be, it can, it can either be Asr time or Isha time. But I've missed my I am Asr. Yeah. Asr, yeah. And he wants to make okay. So there's there's the scholars of Hunat Ta'ala they say that the that uh, the Imam and the person praying behind the Imam, the salawat, the prayers that they're praying has to be prayers that are equal in added, equal in number. Okay, the prayers have to be equal in number and equal in also the way in hayah. Hayah is the way they're prayed. So the, because of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the Imam has been placed in front of you so that you may copy the Imam. So do not make ikhtilaf of the Imam. Do not contradict the Imam. Okay, so in that regard they say that the people praying behind each other, the salawat that they're praying has to be equal. So مثلاً, if someone is praying Salatul Janazah, Allahu Akbar, Salatul Janazah, there's no ruku' there's no sujood. That means no one can pray behind him. Do you understand? A per- if a person method in praying dhuhr can't pray behind someone who's praying salatul janazah and if a person praying salatul dhuhr a uh, person praying salatul janazah cannot pray behind someone praying salatul dhuhr okay um, with regards to dhuhr and asr these two prayers are, are the same are equal in added so a person praying salatul asr can pray behind a person praying salatul dhuhr and vice versa okay if it's Isha, Isha and, and, and Asr are equal as well in number. Okay? So f- if they're equal in number in that regard, if person praying Salatul Isha can pray behind pr- person praying Salatul Asr and vice versa because they're equal. They're equal in the number of Raka'at. Okay? Which leaves Maghrib, مثلا, Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha, which is the most common, right? A person who misses Salatul Maghrib comes and prays behind a person praying Salatul Isha. The Imam is praying Isha. Isha is Arba Raka'at. Maghrib is Thalatha Raka'at. This particular Mas'ala, there is Khilaf Tawil. There's a lot of disagreement يعني, between many different positions. Some scholars, they say, the person praying Maghrib should not pray. Uh, the person praying behind Isha, he shouldn't pray. Others, they say, yes, he can pray, uh, but he has to do certain things. So they say that he has two options. The first option is, when he's praying Salatul Isha behind the Imam, okay, who's praying Salatul Maghrib, uh, the, behind the Imam, so when he's praying Maghrib behind the Imam who's praying Salatul Isha, then they say that either when he gets to the third rak'ah, his third rak'ah, and the third rak'ah of the Imam, then he should remain seated. And the Imam gets up for the fourth rak'ah, the Imam gets up for the fourth rak'ah, he should remain seated. He can't do four, Maghrib is three. When the Imam comes back for Tashahud, he should then, and the Imam makes Taslim, he should make Taslim with the Imam. That's option number one. Option number two, which is the better option, Wallahu A'lam, because uh, it involves this person is able to pray Maghrib and Isha. The second option is, when, he, when the Imam he reaches his third rak'ah, and, and the person praying behind the Imam reaches the third rak'ah, this person remains seated, makes Tashahud, and leaves the, sal- the Salah, makes Taslim. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. The Imam now is up in doing his fourth. Then he gets up and says Allahu Akbar and joins the Imam in the Isha prayer. Joins the Imam in the Isha prayer. So the Imam's fourth rak'ah will be his first rak'ah. So when the Imam finishes his fourth rak'ah, he gets up and completes Isha. And that way this person has prayed Maghrib and Isha with the same Imam. This is like a riddle in fiqh. And if in fiqh, for example, if someone says, uh, who describe a person who prays Maghrib and Isha with the same Imam at the same time? Okay, it's this particular issue. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a fiqh riddle. But again, there's a khilaf between, ahl, between the people of, of knowledge. But Wallahu A'lam, uh, this particular situation here uh, is, is Wallahu A'lam. The second option seems to be a good option because that way the person prays Maghrib and Isha as well at the same time. But the person praying behind the Imam, he doesn't read loudly anyway. He he reads silently. The Imam is the is the one praying, uh, reading loudly. Sorry, just, uh, yeah, it's for the Imam. 
I don't know if sometimes it, has, it sounds silly, but for mm. example, acid and Asia, we go back to acid and Asia. Yeah. I'm praying acid. Acid, you don't read loud. No. Asia, you're supposed to read loud. Okay. So Reading read. loudly is not from the arkan or the wajibat of the salah. Okay, it's not from the pillars in the wajibat of the salah. Reading loudly and audibly is a sunnah. Okay, it's a sunnah, which means that you can leave it. Okay, so if the imam is praying a salah, isha, then they read loudly. The asr, the one praying asr doesn't read loudly, obviously. But if the person praying asr uh, is, is leading someone who has to pray isha, for example, for mathalan, then the person praying behind the Imam doesn't read audibly. He reads silently. He reads his Isha prayer silently. Okay, although that's a very, that's a scenario that's very, يعني, that would mean, uh, يعني, it's very rare to find that anyway. But even if it does happen, you don't read loudly. The qa'id, the principle is, you follow the Imam. You follow the Imam. If the Imam is not reading uh, at, all, at all time. So if you're, if you're being led in the Salah, then you don't read loudly anyway. You read silently. No. Barakallahu feekum. Atfadha. Talking about sujood on on a, on an object or on a sujada or something, is that was that hukum only for for the jabha for the forehead or was that for all of the seven? Forehead? No, just for the jabha, the object. Yeah, just for the jabha. No, no. Was that what if that object was, for example? Uh, if a person was wearing a hat and the hat was covering his forehead, so now the no, that that's in that's a hat is is something that's like a garment. It takes a hukum of a garment. It's not an object. It's connected to him. Okay, so if if a turban, for example, was wrapped thickly around someone's forehead, no, then you have to remove the turban. Okay. Or or or, or make sure that the turban is you know. The forehead is exposed. Uh, yeah, the forehead is exposed now. Would that be the same for a regular kind of kufi that we wear, or? You, not really, no, the, with regards to the kufi, the kufi usually doesn't cover your forehead anyway. Usually like this, for example, your forehead is exposed, right? Um, in any case, try to expose your forehead all, at all costs. Um, but if there's a kufi, for example, that's very thin, then that shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't change the ruling, inshallah. Just no. for clarity, why does, why does the jabha differ from the other parts? Because the hadith uh, uh, explicitly uh, uh, made the exception for the jabha, um, not the other parts. No, no. Uh, you know, when, for example, uh, if you do not used to pray, um, you know, at the time of Jahidiyya, then if you, if you did not used to pray no. at the time of Jahidiyya, right, mm-hmm. then you start to pray, and then, you know, there are so, there are, there are many prayers with, like, there are many prayers which you didn't pray, so do you need to know to make them up so if Allah, uh, under the opinion of the scholars that say that that person has, was a kafir no under the opinion of the scholars that say that person was a major sinner yes you have to make them up no uh, you know the hadith the first hadith that you mentioned the, the heat wave hmm. um, you delay the salah is the reason because of the heat wave or is it the um, short uh, what do you mean? The, the re- no, the reason is the heat wave, not the length of the heat wave. Or is it the oh, you mean the delaying? You mean? Yeah, is it the khushu or is it the heat wave? Both. Both. Yeah, there's no. There could be one more than one illa. One illa is explicit. The other is implicit. The khushu is implicit, and also the delaying. We didn't cover this masala, but the delay. How long should you delay it? How long should you delay? Should you wait an hour, two hours, three hours? Uh, there is a hadith I cannot re- it's authentic but I can't remember where um, where the, the Sahaba delayed until they were able to uh, until the, the, the walls and, the, and until, the, until, until they could basically uh, na'am, until they could uh, um, use the shade of, of, of uh, the trees until the trees and the, until they could pr- يعني, the, the trees the shade of the trees and the walls uh, became uh, became tall enough or large enough for them to shade under, so they would wait and uh, wait until then, until the shade became apparent. Do you get, no. do you get the ajr for delaying in this case? Is it the it's sunnah? mustahab, naam. According to the majority of the scholars, it's mustahab. Others they say it's not mustahab, it's just rukhsa. Mm-hmm. Allah alam is considered mustahab delayed, naam. No. Was that 
that for the one who's trying to build the um, uh, the habit of praying. Um, we tell them, you know, to start slowly, try and progress rather than take it on and leave it on in one go. We tell them that, every, so for example, if they read Dhuhr, maybe they read Asr and then they read Maghrib. Do we tell them that every time they read a Salat, take your Shahada beforehand? Because they're trying now to read the Salat, like they're still missing some of the Salat as they're, you know, going through the process of building up the... We, t- we, give them, we tell them, listen, you have an option. You have a choice to become a Muslim or, no, or, or a non-Muslim. There's no, there's no compromise in religion. They either pray five daily prayers. I'm not going to say, oh, they don't. But they pray five daily prayers. Ya ladina amanu udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Allah says, oh, you who believe, enter into uh, Islam in its entirety. Not partially. You know, you can't atakfuruna bi ba'd. Atu'minuna bi ba'd al-kitab wa atakfuruna bi ba'd. You believe in some of the book and leave the other rest there's no compromise either you do it or you don't yani, th- this is the thing we, you know these people uh, you know they've prayed Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib we cannot water down our religion and tell them Wallahi mashallah well done you've prayed three you don't need to pray Isha and Fajr by the time Dhuhr comes the next day the shaitan has already destroyed them how do, how, do, how do we know they might even die in that, in that particular evening? How do we know? They, the whole point is to pray five daily prayers so that the Iman, that's the only way the Iman increases. But Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and then the Iman increases, then they miss Isha on purpose and Fajr, then the Iman drops again. So they start, every time they start from scratch. You know, it's, it's, it's basically, it's like a person who's filling a bucket of, of water and there's a hole at the bottom. So every time they keep filling, they try to fill the bucket, but the bucket never gets full because there's holes in the bucket. You know, so we cannot compromise. We have to tell them, listen, pray your five daily prayers. This is a matter of Jahannam. This is a matter of Nar and Jannah. This is a matter of Lashak. Yes, you can be kind to them. You can call, يعني, obviously you're gentle with them, call them to kindness and, يعني, and, and be lenient with them. Lenient without compromising. You know, lean into that compromising. How long does it, how many minutes does it take to pray? Yani, how many minutes? Subhanallah. These people, some of them, they go to the gym and lift uh, weights, subhanallah. But they can't even pray the, uh, a salah that takes five, ten minutes. How does that even make any sense, yani? Do you understand, akhi? So we have to, we cannot compromise. We have to be very strict in our religion, yani. Wallahu alam. How do you advise the one they've come to us we've given them da'wah to Islam and they accept Islam there and then maybe they've done no research beforehand they don't know the first thing about praying and you know maybe you're not going to spend a day or a week with them they're going to go off to live their life maybe you might how do we advise them in regards to what do you do to the rest of so you, you give them material authentic material that there's so much out there now anyway to, to read you tell them obviously the basic things of Islam that are wajib upon them like the five daily prayers zakah Psalm, Hajj, these f- and the six articles of faith. Make sure they understand those two. Okay. Once they understand those two, then give them articles, give them books, give them uh, authentic material that they can actually read. And it would be always it would be good to keep in touch with them anyway. Um, if you can, if you cannot, maybe put them in touch with a Islamic society or, for example, a masjid or an imam or local imam uh, or a class method and tell them to go to that particular class. If you've done that, then a data let let the alik and you've comp- you've done what's wajib upon you. No. Barakallahu. No. Question, sorry. No. Um, my son is sitting down here, but it's regarding salah and two people on deliveries. No. You do deliveries every time you're on road driving. You know, it comes to some prayers. You pray them. Some of them you don't pray them. The reason you don't pray them because you're on road and you pray on road. And you? And you're standing up while. No. You know, sometimes you're doing deliveries, you need it. Uh, quick, you just go there. You what should they do? It. Yeah, what should you do? Can you go back to the toilet and clean your. Two things they do. Bowl, they take with them a bottle of water at all, all the time yes. and, a sig- and a prayer mat. And they can pray anywhere. And you can clean yourself while you're standing up while you. So if they're, ur- if they're urinating yes. and um, they do istinja, so if they have no water, then they do istinja. Istinja means they can use a t- tissue. They can use tissue or they can use uh, cloth uh, and just they have to make sure that the urine hasn't reached their, their trousers or their underwear. And if, even if it has, then they can sprinkle water on it. Oh, so you 
say, yeah. little drops come in, yeah, they can water, then and then. And yeah, they can sprinkle water. You don't have to even clean that thoroughly. They can just take some water and sprinkle water on the places where they've, they, either they can see the najas. If they can see it, they put water on it. If it's so minute, they cannot see it. They cannot see the urine. Kind of but you can it, feel yeah. it, then they sprinkle water on it. And that's it. Then when they sprinkle water on it, they make wudu. They make wudu with the water. Where there and then. Okay? If they're wearing socks, they can wipe over the socks. So that's, that's easier. That's another point. Do you understand? That was another question that's coming. Yeah. What's the, what's the three counts you know, washing <laughs> on top of socks? Yes, you can wipe over the socks. Now. It's, it's, it's the Prophet did it Salah Salah It's in Bukhari and Muslim Naam If you have wudu beforehand Make sure you have wudu beforehand oh, So if I already have wudu I put my socks on Yeah Then okay I went If you're, if you're someone If you're, if you're present in, If you're not If you're a traveller You're allowed three days and three nights To wipe over the same socks As long as you don't have a wet dream Or have janaba You know janaba? Yes Okay uh, If you're someone who's in the city then you have 24 hours to wipe over it. So I can go and wipe over it? Yes. Three times, that's just it. No, once. Just that's once. No good. I count everything. I'm done. Yes. Just once. That's it. And be light of it. Very easy. Instead of washing your feet. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought you need to get them leather socks. You know, the ones that you see. No. Like any wear. socks, that any cloth that you're wearing on your feet, that's considered a sock. Whether it's made from cotton, leather. Aluminium doesn't matter. Let me go over mm -hmm. it again. I did my wudu. I could three one time. No, one time. So when you, if you make wudu first, uh -huh. you wash your feet. Yes. Then you wear the socks. Yes, if you break your wudu again, yes. you make wudu as usual. Yes. But when it comes, to, when it's time to wash you, to 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 wash your feet, you don't wash your feet. You just wipe with with a wet hand, just wet. You don't have to pour any water on it. Just once, like this. Look, like this. Like this, okay. that's it. Okay. On top of the socks, okay. yeah, and that's it. Even if you're on doing, if if, if you're doing Uber Eats, delivery, khalas, simple, and you don't have to miss any prayer. Missing the prayer never occurs in Islam. It's so easy to not. It's so easy to pray anywhere. Even if you don't have a sajada, you can pray on the earth, on the ground, on tarmac. Okay, as long as there's no urine or there's no najasa, there you can pray there. If you don't know where the Qibla is, if you don't have an app and you tried your best, you don't know where the Qibla is, pray where, where, wherever, whichever way. Does it have to be in a, like a corner kind of thing, angle kind of thing? What, the Qibla? Yeah, the Qibla. It depends on where you are, obviously, yeah. If the Qibla is, obviously has a certain direction, but it depends on where you are. Um, and you just, you, you, so you pray at all costs. You just stop, pray. But also, it's easy, take a, you know, make sure you have a bottle of water with you all the time. If you don't have a bottle of water, okay, and it's the, like now Dhuhr and Asr is like there's hours between Dhuhr and Asr, five or six hours, right? Uh, between Dhuhr and Asr. If you don't have a bottle of water, then wait until you, you do. But if it's the Maghrib prayer, the Maghrib prayer, the time of Maghrib prayer is very short. And you don't have a bottle of water, you, there's no taps, there's no masajid near you, you're, you're, you're somewhere, you know, where there is no masajid, no bottle of water. And the time of the Salah is about to leave, you make Tayammum. Do you know Tayammum? Like no, Tayammum is basically making wudu. Uh, it's the it's the it's the it's the replacement of wudu if you have no water. Okay, so on with your hands on the earth, on the ground, or on a wall, you t you hit it once. Okay, and you 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 do this. Okay, and you wash it when you do this with your face. That's it. That's wudu, uh, done. That's wudu done, and then you pray. Okay. If you're not able to find any water. That's if you're not able to find any water. If you can, you have to go find water. So even if you go to an off license, yeah, ask them for the toilet or water bottle yes. or, or maybe if you go Yeah. Or you could go and buy water. If you can go buy water, buy water. So that's very rare. Yeah, it's very rare. Yeah. No. But just as going back to you when you urine um No. Put water on top of it, that's it. Sprinkle water on Sprinkle it. Water. You and that's it. Your boxes, you don't rub it like no, that. no, no, no. You do not rub your boxes whatsoever. No, try not to get all yeah, No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just, just, just sprinkle water on it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, when you mention after urination, you just do wudu. So, do you, with a bottle of water, right? But, like, do you wash your pants as well before you do wudu? When you're. After you, naam. So you do istinja, 
uh, istinja basically you do you can you can if you have water you can you can wash it sprinkle water on it okay if if you don't have any water then you can use tissue no so is it like just the part where like where the emission came from so if it's urination just in the front end that's it yeah no, because that's where the the, 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 the emission came from now. No. And after you after you use tissue stand, you don't need to go back if water comes available, you don't need you to You don't need to now. You don't need to now. No. No. Barakallah fikum. وكن حلس درسك وافرح به تكن قائدا في غد للأمم وبادر شبابك من قبل أن يقطع عزمك سيف الهرم